Hi, I'm Peter Clausey with Investor Intel here at day one of the world famous mining show, PDAC 2019. We're halfway through the day, the crowds are building and so is the excitement. And I'm happy to see my old friend Don Bubar. Let's talk about the advanced materials part. You mentioned before we got started that you have a novel approach or a novel use for your lithium. Tell me about that. Well, advanced materials is a broad growing sector. That's what created Investor Intel actually, is trying to create more investor awareness right. around these new materials that are still emerging in terms of supply chains and opportunities. And so we've been an early mover in that space and mm -hmm. actually our lithium project was our first real asset. And that's in Northwestern Ontario near Kenora. In Northwestern Ontario near Kenora. We've been working on it for over 20 years, actually. I was very early mover. Well, in the, uh, nobody was in phase. lithium then. Like that, that preceded lithium 1.0. Yes, yeah. And at the time, we had made a new discovery of a lithium pegmatite resource enriched in a very unusual lithium mineral called petalite. Okay. And petalite is a very rare lithium mineral. It only occurs in very highly evolved uh, pegmatites. And there must be then a unique use for it if it's that rare. Exactly. It has traditionally been a preferred industrial mineral source of lithium to use in specialty glass and ceramics. Uh, like, like transparent glass, like windows, or more industrial glass? Industrial glass, but also uh, consumer products. The property that lithium imparts to glass is it makes it stronger mm -hmm. and thermal shock resistant. So it was actually the lithium mineral petalite that Corning used to invent Corningware cookware. Really? And that's the critical ingredient that makes it so sturdy. At the so, and that's why you can put it in the oven, is the lithium... That, Take that it out, put it in a, a pail of water and it won't break. It's because of the lithium in that formulation. Just, you know, just when I thought I knew everything. That's, that's interesting. And so what's happened now in that space is um, there's a lot of innovation in the glass and ceramics industry too. And they're starting to create new materials uh, using um, these other obscure elements like lithium. Right. And all the high strength glass products that you're hearing about now, the critical ingredient, it's always lithium. I recently saw an ad for rollable glass, like a tablet that you could roll up and and, and, and the glass moves. That's an example of the uh, types of innovation that's uh, happening in the space. I'm not sure if lithium is particularly used in that one. Right. But anything that they're making that's really strong now, like the glass for display panels that you want to have really, really sturdy, mm -hmm. lithium is a critical ingredient. So there's cool. demand is increasing as these new products are innovated and growing. In How rare is this form of lithium? Very rare, actually. There's only been one um, real significant producer of it in the world historically, right. an operation in uh, Zimbabwe called Bikita. And uh, that's been it. The others have all been kind of very small, artisanal size uh, right. resources. Now, Avalon also <laughs> has a rare earths property up in the Northwest Territories in Canada. Yeah. And you're chasing numbers 59 and 60 on the periodic table. And by the way, I love your tie. <laughs> if the camera can get a good shot of that, it is the periodic table. And for the mining show, that is absolutely perfect. Especially if you're in technology metals and yeah. minerals. <laughs> I, I see copper, I see chromium, I see cobalt. It's a great tie. But your chasing's number 59 and 60 on the periodic table yes. at your Northwestern Territory project. Yes. And you recently brought in a new partner, I understand. That's right, yeah. So we, uh, we looked at one model on that project historically on a resource called the basal zone that was, uh, had mineralogy that made it highly enriched in the heavy rare earths. Okay. And that looked like a good opportunity uh, 10 years ago. But what we're seeing now is more specific demand for neodymium, praseodymium because of the magnet app. You can say those words. I, I always get hung up on them. I got a little bit of practice. Okay. And so uh, we were able to sort of uh, revisit the opportunity there because there are other separate zones on the property mm -hmm. that have different mineralogy and one in particular that is uh, very highly enriched in uh, rare earth or mineral bastocyte right. and that bastocyte has unusual enrichment in those two particular elements, is neodymium, that, praseodymium. Is that the T zone? Yes. And so that would be the target of your next stage of exploration? So we looked at the, the opportunity there to, to develop it at a very 
modest scale. It's right at surface. It had some work done on it historically. It's got it added in it. So it can be developed pretty quickly and using uh, new ore sorting technology, we think we can make a concentrate of the basicite very easily at a low cost, not using any water, and uh, be able to uh, then send that somewhere else for leaching to recover the rare earths. Will that be work done this summer? Yes, that's the plan. Okay, so there's a lot of news we should be looking for out of Avalon. On all three projects, including our uh, Tin Indian project in Nova Scotia. Which we didn't get around to talking about, we can do next time. I thank you so much for your time, it's always good to see you, I learn something every time. Thanks, Thanks. for coming in. Good to see you, Peter.